I'm Andy Griffin. Uh, I'm a writer and local historian, and I'm here in the Longhurst Hall Collingwood Bar. Uh, this is the, the setting, and people are going to come and uh, find out about this great unsung hero. Collingwood, as many people now know, was uh, born in Newcastle on the Quayside uh, in 1748. He grew up there <laughs> in the Coley time. And um, when he was about eight or nine, he actually went to the local school uh, and he was well educated. He, he would have preferred to have gone to one of the boarding schools, but he was educated uh, in Newcastle. And at the age of 12, he joined his uncle's ship called the Shannon uh, as a cabin boy. Very young, very young to start a career, but that's how it was to, uh, in that period. If you wanted to rise to the top, you had to start very early on. He was 10 years older than uh, Horatio Nelson, but uh, he was a very close friend, even in spite of the age difference, but he seemed to follow in Nelson's footsteps. Nelson uh, was in command of the Hitchinbroke, the Badger, the Lowestoft, and when he left his promotions, Collingwood followed right behind him. Together, they served in Antigua, uh, on, a, on a mission. Uh, so they were very close companions, although quite different in personality. Around about uh, 1786, the, uh, the French, who were always the enemy, they were always the opponents of the English at that time, uh, the, the French had their own internal problems with the revolution. And Collingwood came back to England. He hadn't seen his family for 28 years. 28 years, and he came back, and he was, uh, he was effectively a stranger to them. So when he was here, he was fated by the, um, by the society at that particular time, because he was a captain, and he'd seen, he'd, he'd been around the world, and he was celebrated. And he met the daughter of the mayor of uh, Newcastle, uh, Sarah Blackett, and he married her. He wasn't often home, but at this particular period, he spent four years initially in Newcastle, but then they moved to their home uh, in Morpeth. And in that short period of four years, when he was at home, uh, they had two children, two daughters, Sarah Jr. and uh, uh, Patricia. He had to go back to sea, and he rarely came home again. But he was back in 1802, having been involved in a couple of major battles, the Battle of the, uh, the Glorious 1st of June in uh, 1794, and also the Battle of St. Vincent's in 1797. And he was, uh, he, he was uh, recognised as being the finest gunner on his ship, the HMS Excellent. He came home in 1802, expecting to retire. He was made a rear admiral, and all he wanted to do was to stay in Morpeth with his family and, his, and, and look after his garden. He just loved his garden. Now he, of course, was uh, second in command under Nelson at the Battle of Trafalgar, but uh, when the battle was underway, he was first into action on the Royal Sovereign. But so shortly after the start, at about one o'clock, uh, Nelson was shot and taken below. A message was sent to Collingwood, and he had to take command of the uh, battle. And he was the one who brought it to its conclusion. It was Collingwood who received the swords of surrender from the combined fleet of the Spanish and the French. And so effectively, I believe, he was the main person who saved the nation at this critical time at the Battle of Trafalgar. He wanted to come home then. He was uh, getting on for 60, and he just, he was very old for, for at that particular time, to be active in the Navy. But he had to stay there. The King asked him to stay, the Prime Minister, the First Lord of the Admiralty, said, we need you out there to, to hold things together. And after five years, he sent a message to say that he could no longer, he could no longer operate. He had stomach cancer by then, and uh, he asked if he could be released. And he was allowed to come home, and he lived from uh, Menorca, Port Mahan, and seven days on his journey back to England, to his beloved family, to his beloved Morpeth and his garden, uh, he died. And he, he was buried in St Paul's Cathedral alongside 
uh, Nelson, just several yards away from Nelson, in quite a simple uh, coffin. He was a great man. 35 years later, there was a monument erected to him in the mouth of the Tyne by public subscription. But I think people had forgotten about Collingwood, and I'm delighted to say that now people have remembered the great man, and I genuinely believe in, in my book that he was and can claim to be the Northumbrian who saved the nation. <laughs>